So this is what happens when we turn on B1 and tip things into the transverse plane. So my question now is, once we get to this point where we've timed it just right with just the amount, correct amount of B1 or RF power so that we rotate our magnetization exactly 90 degrees. And now I shut everything off. So now I'm just going to stop. Now one thing, by the way, that we could do is we could have our little antenna over here. And since we have net transverse magnetization, we can measure some signal. But what I want to know is what happens at this point. So I've taken this magnetization and I've rotated it 90 degrees. And it took energy to get there. So I'm now going to say hands off. We're going to turn off, not put any more energy into the system. So what happens? Well, enter any system right, is always going to drive towards the lowest possible energy state, right? It's even true of your kitchen, right? If you don't work hard enough to keep it clean, it eventually will end up in disarray. That's what they call the household de definition of entropy. So, but seriously, if you turn this off and you leave it alone, what's going to happen now? Well, we are going to end up eventually back at our resting state, which was zero degrees with some excess amount of longitudinal magnetization. That's the easy part. So my real question is, how do we get from this point to this point, and what happens to allow that to happen? So let's address the second question first. What has to happen for us to go back to zero? So the thing that has to happen is that we have to have some energy transferred out of this system, out of these spins. It has to go somewhere else. Right? Energy always has to be conserved. Uh, and the system can't just stay in a static situation. So we're going to have to look at the potential places where that energy can go first of all. Secondly, you might think that you would just slowly rotate back the way you came. But the reality is that that's not what happens. Right? In reality, it's going to look like this. Okay? And the reason for that is that at any point in time, any point along this curve, we can define the magnetization based on its two components. Right? Our longitudinal and transverse component magnetization. In order for us to rotate 90 degrees, we have what's essentially a progressive symmetrical change in those two component vectors. Right? One of them is shrinking at the same rate that the other one is growing. And that's why we literally rotate the magnetization down like this. In order for that to happen, the rate of change along each of those two component vectors has to be the same. And it turns out that while that's true when you're dumping the energy into the system, when you're going back in the other direction, those two component vectors both have to change to get you back to where you started, but they do not change at the same rate. And the reason they don't change at the same rate is because they are two independent processes, each relying on a different place to dump that energy. Okay? And so what we're going to talk about is this process called relaxation, which is going back from this rotated or sometimes called excited state which requires us to remove energy from the system and put it someplace else. And it turns out that that is something that is governed by two separate processes, one of which describes the change in the time course in the transverse component magnetization, and the other which describes the change or time course of the longitudinal magnetization.